a congressional conversation with Joe Donnelly today on Politically Speaking. Good afternoon and welcome to Politically Speaking. I'm your host Jim Wentz and my guest today is 2nd District Congressman Joe Donnelly. Joe, there's lots to talk about, uh, but probably no issues more important than U.S. involvement in foreign, in foreign countries. Uh, let's start with Afghanistan and with Osama bin Laden dead. The question that's being asked more and more frequently is why are we still there? And is it time to bring the troops home? And what can we accomplish in the next 20 months that the president wants us to be there till the end of 2014 that we haven't accomplished in the last 10 and a half years? Well, what we're trying to do is have an orderly um, withdrawal to come home right now and leave some stability behind. And, and that's the purpose of... of is it going uh, to take 20 months to well, extract ourselves? Well, obviously, you know, there's actually talk about trying to do it in significantly less time. And, and I would support that as well. Uh, the sooner we can wrap this up, the better. But we don't want to leave a complete mess behind. No, of course not. Where yeah. is that talk coming from? That talk is coming from Washington, from the different committees in Congress as well, as well as um, in the executive branch too. You know, we had an extraordinarily um, tragic event this past weekend right. where one of our soldiers uh, was involved and a number of Afghan uh, uh, citizens were killed. Something like 16 uh, Afghan yes. civilians and killed. So this is of the utmost seriousness and, and in, in fact, Defense Secretary Panetta is, is there today. And is, and is working on the way out. And what we're trying to make sure is that the place where uh, Al-Qaeda formed their plans to attack us on 9-11, that we don't leave behind safe havens ever again. That can be in large measure accomplished through special forces uh, and through uh, working with the, the Afghan army and the Afghan police. And the goal is to try to keep plussing them up enough so we can come home as quickly as possible. And, and uh, as I said, if we can move that timetable up, uh, I would be in favor of that. Did this soldier act alone or was he with others? I mean, I've heard stories, I've heard rumors that he was not alone, but I don't well, know for sure which happened, what happened. We don't know for sure all the details, but we know that when he returned to the base, he returned by himself and, um, and surrendered by himself. And so that is one indicator that um, it, it is our belief at this time that he was, uh, he was acting on his own. How does the United States deal with the resentment that's going to come our way because of this? It is, um, it is a, a huge challenge um, when you have uh, such incredibly talented troops, such incredibly wonderful individuals who have done so many good things. Um, th this is one of those uh, very, very sad and tragic things. Uh, that has happened and what we can do to rebuild the trust is just keep working to do our job the best we can. Um, if you look from every discussion there has been with the with the Afghan people um, there's no desire to have the Taliban come back. There's no desire to uh, to have to deal with uh, living in that fashion again and unfortunately uh, we're in a position where we're trying to stand up people who are very difficult to get to that point. And this is ultimately going to be decided by the Afghan people. And I think that the millions and millions of positive interactions between our troops and the Afghan citizens, um, that overall the, the people of Afghanistan know that uh, we have incredibly kind-hearted, hard-working, dedicated men and women who not only serve our country, but have given them the chance to try to put a more stable society together. You've been there. Yes. You've been close enough to hear the bullets being fired. Yes. Do you, uh, what is Afghanistan like as a country? I think when we talk about, you know, trying to save Afghanistan or do nation, nation building, people right. think of Afghanistan as a country like ours, but they really don't have a strong central government there's, like there's, ours. There's no way to even compare the two different countries. To give you an idea, um, we were, in Kandahar and heading to the Afghanistan-Pakistan border and we were in some striker vehicles that left the uh, operating base uh, heading to um, the border area and as we were doing that we were going through a town a little town Spinboldak is the name of it and uh, as we went through the town uh, there were probably a thousand um, men of all different ages outside and 
it, it, it's like there's two or three different worlds. And what I mean by that is there are little pickup trucks there. And right next to the pickup truck is a donkey cart that uh, people dress like Jesus and riding in a donkey cart like Jesus are. And so you have uh, thousands of years of, uh, of, of culture change uh, in the two different uh, uh, groups. 90% of the country is illiterate. Um, and the reason I mention that there's so many men is that the women are not allowed outside. And up on the hill is this one big compound. And they said, that's the local warlord. He controls what everybody down here does. And so you have a culture that's completely different. And what we're trying to ensure is that it's a place where they can never, the Taliban can never plot again against us. That, um, but it's a large country. How can we, how can we assure that? Through um, special operations and drones and similar things that y you can't do it with boots on the ground uh, from our country with, with hundreds of thousands of soldiers. It, it has to be done through technology and through special forces is, is how that's done. And what we're trying to do is reduce our presence as fast as we can while still being consistent with the mission of not leaving a completely failed place behind. Okay. This latest tragedy comes on top of Americans burning copies of the Koran, American Marines urinating on the bodies of dead Taliban soldiers. Again, how do we deal with a nation whose people must see us as barbaric occupiers of the worst sort? Well, I mean, I don't think we are, but if I were an Afghan, it'd be well, hard here's, not here's to Here's the other that side way. of that, that every day the Indiana National Guard goes into towns uh, in Coast Province by the Pakistan border and works with the farmers there to enable them to, for the first time, be able to plant and grow crops that feed their family. And that example, I, I was with those soldiers, uh, and, and as they go into the towns, it's incredibly dangerous that some of the same farmers who work with them during the day are putting IEDs in the road at night. And, uh, what we're trying to do, and, and those examples you cited, are probably one-tenth of one percent of the interactions uh, that our soldiers have had with the people of Afghanistan. Uh, I've been with these soldiers. They're incredibly talented. They're the best of the best. Um, they look at these women and children uh, and families in Afghanistan and protect them as much as if it was their own kid back here in South Bend or Logansport or Rochester. And so that's the daily uh, experiences that occur every day. Um, these things that happened are awful, but they are aberrations. And what we're trying to do, uh, make no mistake, is to get home as quickly as we possibly can. One of the things that happened with Afghanistan early on, so much of what was needed to um, make Afghanistan a success, it was sent to Iraq. And so we were in a position when we could have really gotten Afghanistan squared away that we opened up a completely different front. Now that we've gotten out of Iraq, how are things going there? It is, uh, it is going in a way that the Iraqis are deciding um, their own future. And so there were a lot of predictions of an instant civil war that would happen. That has not happened. And they are now fighting and arguing over oil revenues. So um, they're no different than any other government that's out there, it seems. Okay. They seem to be making progress. Um, they have decisions mm -hmm. to make. But it is, it is the Iraqis' decisions and the Iraqis' future. We are where we should be, not in Iraq and back home. When these incidents happen, is it an, is it a, an example of maybe our, our military leadership not doing the right thing, not, not inspiring our troops? Or is it, is it a case of our troops simply having been there too long and not, and not being able to cope with the strain? Sure. We don't know. Um, all the details of this, and we will find out. But I, I will tell you that having been in Afghanistan a number of times, in Iraq a number of times, having been to all our National Guard, or, or number, all our National Guard units in our district, uh, a number of them around the state, that uh, they are the most talented, most amazing people uh, I have met in this job. And so I would, uh, I would bet on the American soldier any day. I would too, and I, I, I know that you're speaking from the heart, and, yeah. I, and I agree 100% with you. I'm just No, no, I understand me, exactly these, what you're saying. Here's yeah. the thing. You know, you've been there. You've seen it face right. to face, and I have not. 
but the American people, they get what they see on TV right. or out of the newspaper, so it's kind of magnified for us. Well, part of my job is by being here with you today is to let everybody know who's watching that, um, you know, I have full faith and confidence in, in the American service men and women, in their abilities, in their talents. Um, we had a country in Iraq that was completely in flames, and only by the hard work of our service men and women did we were we able to bring that back. I, I've looked and, in and their sacrifice and too. their sacrifice. I've looked in uh, the saddest part of this job has been to be with the families uh, who have lost a member, and and we just lost a, uh, an exceptional individual just a few months ago from Afghanistan, who actually went his name. Uh, specialist Bob Tauteris, he went, uh, his son had signed up in the National Guard. His son's 22 years old. And the dad's in the 40s. And the dad signed up because he didn't want his son going over there by himself. And the dad was in um, a vehicle with three other Indiana National Guardsmen. And, uh, and or, or there were more than three, but, but four of them were killed. Oh. And so he was killed watching over to make sure his son got home safely. And his son is home now. But uh, that's the kind of sacrifice that has been made by the people of Indiana and our country. So you, you believe that we can leave Afghanistan perhaps sooner than the end of 2014? I believe that's going to happen. And that we can leave a country that can take care of itself, that can govern itself? Uh, you know, as much that's, as, that's, as much as they ever have. We can perhaps. put the conditions in place. Okay. And then it's up to them to try to work together to try to get it done. For instance, in Iraq, we put the conditions in place and we came home. And then they looked at each other and that's the moment that they had where they had to say, are we gonna, are we gonna spend our time going after each other? Are we gonna actually try to, to accomplish something? And that's the decisions the Afghans are gonna have to make. Okay. There's a lot of pressure on President Obama to intervene in Iran. Uh, what do you think the president should do? Well, I think what we're doing right now um, he is working with our allies um, in Israel. He is working with our allies around the world. There, is, there are very significant sanctions in place against Iran. Um, I think those will continue to be expanded. No options are being taken off the table as to um, what appropriate responses uh, can be made. And so a lot of what we do is dependent on what Iran does as it moves forward. Uh, a few weeks ago, they reached out to the French government saying, we want to try to work with everybody. Well, we'll see if they're good to their word. We had a very tight package of <coughs> sanctions and programs against Iran uh, that were moving the ball even further. And we asked the Russians and Chinese to help with the effort, and they absolutely refused. If they would come in and help with the effort, we could get this done, uh, I think, well short of military action. But they won't, and we understand that. Uh, they're playing in, their own game. Instead, they agreed to buy Iran's oil. That's exactly right. And took the pressure, and took the, our financial pressure that we were trying to put on goes away if they can sell oil well, to the Chinese. It certainly helps Iran. Out. I mean, that, that's the final domino that would have put Iran in a place where they couldn't, uh, couldn't move in a different direction and would come to the table. But um, we continue to pressure with the sanctions. Um, we have to continue to understand that the people of Iran hate their government. Um, they are. Uh, all into the Facebook, Twitter world. They see what else is out there. Uh, but what their government, uh, they hate their government, but there's nothing they can do right now. Why do you think they hate their government? Because it's repressive, because it's vicious, because it kills their citizens, because it has failed them economically, where the unemployment for young people is through the roof. And so uh, everybody in this world, the same hopes and dreams, uh, a good job, a good education, a 